And welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, where we bring awareness of sustainable health in the business hustle space. The Natural Health Podcast is perfect for the high-performing, business-minded individuals who want to work with their biochemistry to achieve success and optimal health. It's Friday, which means it's time for friends sharing facts about health, business, and overall success. In today's episode, we talk to Tim James. Tim James is one of those guys that will leave you feeling younger and more energetic just by hearing him speak. His passion flows out of him like a fresh waterfall in a dry desert. He's turning 48, but feels like he's 18 with a lot more energy than that. What's his secret? Tim's journey led him to a shocking discovery, which helped his friend beat cancer and transformed every area of his life. Feeling charged with a duty to help others, he started sharing his knowledge with anyone who would listen. This led him to producing his own chemical-free food products, Chemical Free Body, was born. What he absolutely loves doing in his free time is foraging for wild mushrooms. He loves playing the guitar and he loves learning new ways to improve his health. Welcome to the Natural Health Podcast, Tim. Hey, thanks for having me on here. I'm really excited to uh, share it today. Thank you. You're most welcome. So when was the last time you went foraging for wild mushrooms and what did you find? Well, actually, you brought that up. Uh, we went for morel mushrooms back home to my hometown over in Eastern Oregon. And um, the first day we picked about 60 pounds. So it was a big haul <laughs> the, f- the first day. And um, that's always been a lot of fun because, you know, you just it's like like when I was a little kid, you know, it was like searching for Easter eggs. That was always fun. You know, it was like a treasure hunter. If you've ever been a treasure hunt, that's fun stuff, right? There's a lot of there's companies and businesses and game things are built around that. So um, foraging for wild mushrooms is literally like a a treasure hunt that you can eat when you're done. And um, if you got some left over and you have the right channels, you can sell them and put some money in your pocket and pay for gas and then some. So it's a lot, it's, it's just a fun deal. I love that. And definitely healthier than Easter eggs, isn't it? (laughs) Oh yeah. I love that. A lot healthier, especially with the the food dyes. I actually did a, um, um, a video years ago on the food dyes and how they, you know, they cause cancer, right? So it's, you know, yellow dye, number this, red dye, number this, blue dye, number four, whatever. And um, it causes like l- lymphoma, you know, leukemias, they cause, um, <clears throat> well, they're toxic, right? So a hundred percent. That's exactly we're what we're going to be talking about today, which I'm excited about. Before we get into that, I wanted the audience to find out a little bit more about yourself. So I wanted to know what kind of were the key turning points to journey where you are today? I mean, in the intro, we mentioned a little bit about your friends and cancer and so forth, but mm-hmm. what has led you to here today now? Well, you know, I, I would have to go back to my, my, my backstory a little bit. It's really important. So I, I did grow up over in Eastern Oregon on a cattle hay farm. Uh, I grew up on the standard American diet, meat and potato, eggs, coffee, candy, you know, all that stuff, hash browns and donuts and JoJo's and chicken strips and ranch dressing and, you know, pretty much everything that a lot of people are, you know, lasagna, things that people are eating, noodles. And um, it was fine when I was younger. I was an athlete. I played baseball for, you know, high level for 30 years. So I was always moving my body. But by the age of 37, um, my body had broken down. I gained 42 pounds. Um, I had eczema on both of my elbows. I had a huge patch of eczema. The skin issue on my knee. Uh, my elbows and knees were cracking and bleeding, especially in the winter time. It was really bad. Um, I had another skin issue on my right shoulder. Um, I had acid reflux really bad. So I was eating Tums and Rolaids like 24-7 because of the heartburn. And that acid reflux deal, the doctors wanted me to go on Prilosec and do some other stuff. But I just always stayed away from the weird named drugs and stuff like that. I, I, I knew something. That was the only thing that I did know because obviously my health was fading. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was reading different books. and But then it got worse. Um, for two and a half years, I, I started bleeding rectally. So every time I would poop, I would bleed. And that was very painful uh, process on a scale of one to 10. I'd say uh, it's probably a six or a seven every time I poop followed by blood. So as you can imagine, here I am 37 years old. I got a couple kids, wife, house, mortgage, business. We're doing all these things um, and I'm bleeding everywhere. Like, it's just like I go to your house for a party or whatever and I'd bump against your wall, your couch, and I'm cleaning up blood and then I poop and there's blood. It's just like my life for was like blood, bleeding. And it was uh, daunting, I had, but I had my head stuck in the stand uh, and I just... Uh, I really didn't know what to do, and um, um, maybe my ego was in the way from s- seeking more help. I don't know. I, w- I wanted help, but I didn't know how to get it. So um, then a friend of mine on my baseball team uh, got diagnosed with uh, stomach cancer. We lost him at age 40. He did chemo and surgery and all that stuff, but we kind of chalked that one up to maybe it was from chewing tobacco, you know, on the baseball team, you know, 
esophageal cancer and then, you know, the stomach. So he had stomach cancer. So I was like, Hmm, you know, maybe that's, that kind of makes sense there. My grandma had died of brain cancer. My aunt had died of skin cancer, melanoma. So watch that was, those were uh, those very painful events for um, our family, but they were older, you know, but this guy, Clay, that on my baseball team, he was 40, right? So this was actually somebody my age. Now I'm like freaked out a little bit. I'm like, well, but it was kind of probably the chewing tobacco deal. And then another friend of mine, Charles, which you mentioned, got diagnosed at age 43 with chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And he was a vegetarian. So he was like the healthiest out of all of us, but he was overweight. He was like a sloppy vegetarian. We learned, you know, lots of cheeses and wine. And, just, you know, he was actually 60 pounds. Over. He was actually more overweight than I was. And, um, uh, so he said, Hey, I, they don't really have a whole lot for me. I he broke the news to me. That he's got this cancer. Supposedly it's incurable. And he said, will you go with me to the Hippocrates health Institute? It's this natural detox and nutrition clinic in Florida. Are you familiar with them? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, I've heard a bit about them. Yes. Yeah. And they've had a lot of people from New Zealand and Australia up there. I mean, there's every time I've went, I've been there five times. There's always people from Australia and New Zealand there. Anyway, so we go there and they just basically put us on a bunch of fresh water, purified restructured water. They put us on these green juices with no sugar in them and sprouted nuts, seeds, grains, and beans and sprouts and sunflower sprouts, all these living foods, even beyond raw food stuff. Um, and, um, you know, I, I did, I put sprouts on my hobby before, <laughs> but I never ate that many of them when I went there and the first class taught me was called internal awareness. It was like three and a half hours long. And they educated us on the time we ate food until the time it left our body, what actually happened. That was an eye opener. But the, the biggest eye opener was the, the doctor there was trying to sell us on the fact that we have about six to 12 pounds of this impacted fecal material and mucoid plaque lining the small and large intestine. We got to clean the colon out because um, it's full of this nasty funk and gunk and junk. And he looked at me and he said, Tim, you got 10 pounds of crap in a five pound bag. And if you ever want to be healthy, truly healthy, not have to deal with disease and all these problems like everybody's dealing with in our culture today, then you got to clean out that colon. It is a waste removal system. It is not a storage tank. So I was like, okay, um, what are you proposing? And then they were talking about colon hydrotherapy or colonics. And, you know, I don't know about you, but like for me, like when I first heard that, like just going to Hippocrates, like I, I would have never went to that place if it wasn't for my friend dying of cancer. There's no way I would have went. I didn't believe in any of that stuff. And that's why I had a lot of health issues. I was very close minded. So um, a colonic, if you aren't familiar with it, for those listening, um, it's you basically sit on a tube rectally and water gently goes in and out of your colon for about an hour. And it just cleans your colon. I mean, it's pretty simple what it is. Like your car gets dirty, you wash it. Your hair gets dirty, you wash it. You know, how about your colon? You ever washed it? Probably not. Well, guess what? It needs cleaned. So um, the next day um, um, I signed up for that and did it because they showed videos of unhealthy people on the standard American diet. 24 year old female with Hashimoto's and thrush, which is like yeast infection. It was like nasty whites and yellows and crap in her, her colon. And then... 65 year old male with prostate cancer and, and, and parasites actually worms crawling around and black and nasty and brown and there. And then, you know, 45 year old female with breast cancer and, and fibromyalgia or something. Right. Um, and, um, man, and just nasty insight. And he's like, now these people have been on the standard American diet. And I'm like, Oh crap, that's me. And then he showed, now this is a person that eats the way we teach and is clean and detox. And there's a nice pink colon and blood vessels and look really good and nice. And, and um, that's when I signed up for that deal when I saw the visuals because it didn't matter really what he said. But when I saw the pictures, I'm like, I'm doing it, even though I was scared. Um, so the next day I did colon hydrotherapy. They weighed me, did the session. They weighed me again. I dropped 10 pounds of impacted fecal material in one hour. And the record at the time in 2011 um, at the Institute was one lady had dropped 27 pounds of impacted fecal material in one uh, colon or colonic colon hydrotherapy session at the Institute. Now think about that 27 pounds. It's the size of a dog, right? I mean, that's a lot of weight. So why is that a bad, why, why is that a problem? Well, just the weight itself was not cool, but this impacted fecal material is a very high acid, low oxygen environment. And what does that do? That breeds what I learned harmful organisms like viruses, bacteria, mold, yeast, fungus, parasites, um, and mutagens, cancer, love it. And looking at the States, I don't know what it's like in, in Australia, but my God, we have a tremendous amount of uh, colon cancer down here, right? 
Um, so it's it's like you get it's like common sense. And once you learn this stuff, you're like, oh yeah, I got to clean that crap out of there. You know, it makes but total even, sense, doesn't it? Yeah, but nobody's like talking about it. And then and a lot of doctors they're afraid to talk about the poop and the. It's like so silly. It's like it's part of your. It, it, the digestive tract is the epicenter. It is the driving engine of your life. This is where the nutrients get extracted to go to your cells for your activities of daily living. And if you are not taking care of your intestinal lining and those little hair-like structures called villi, um, then they won't be able to take care of you. It's just that simple. And you, but the problem is, is we can't see it. That's what I learned. It's out of sight, out of mind. We take really good care of our hair. We put our makeup on. We put our, our best suit and our tie. And we get all brushed up and we look great and we hit the road and we go out there. But what about the inside? You know, you can't see it. It's kind of like your kitchen. It might be really clean, but if you run your finger across the top of your refrigerator, there's probably a bunch of dust up there because you can't see it. But you need to pay attention to the inside of your body. And if you do that, like I did and learned all this stuff, it's actually really simple. It's not that hard. Um, you'll turn your health around. Like you want to have beautiful skin, ladies? Freaking take care of your gut and get, have a beautiful intestinal villi, right? And take good care of that. You want to not get sick or reverse disease? You just take care of the gut. You know, it, is, it goes back to that. So anyway, long story short, um, I'm looking at Charles. Uh, we went through these uh, like detox symptoms. I had night sweats. I was pretty irritable. I had a metallic taste coming off of my tongue when I first went there because I came off the standard American diet. Like, and I went right on to like eating like a wild creature, like out in nature. And, um, but some people had it worse than me. Some of them had rashes breaking out of their arms, their back, their whole face. Um, people there, you would actually see parasites coming out of people's pores. Right. And I actually saw one lady at lunch. She had a parasite crawling out of her eye. And I was like, you have a parasite crawling out of your eye and we're, we're eating lunch. But this was like a common thing at the place. And people in the United States are like, oh, that's that's BS. That's not that's only in third world countries. They get parasites. No, it's about 50 percent of us have parasites. And we're not just talking about tapeworms and hookworms and pinworms. I'm talking about microscopic parasites that you can't see. And all these harmful organisms are consuming the food we eat and the liquids we drink, and then they're urinating and defecating inside of us, creating more acid, which is, it's the breeding ground for disease. So all we learned basically at the Institute was you change your internal environment, your, your mental and how you think, and then what you eat and you drink and, you know, the clothing you wear and all this other stuff. And guess what? Your body's going to respond and it's going to come back to life like super fast. And that's what happened. We came back home within 60 days. I dropped the 42 pounds. I could see my ribs again. My elbows were completely healed. My back issue, the skin issue, they're completely healed. It took eight months to get that huge patch of eczema cleaned up on my body, but my energy skyrocketed. I started sleeping better. I got back into exercise again. I became an athlete again um, in my late 30s, which was really cool. And here I am today, 11 years later. Um, I, I, I literally, I can trail run like every day now like a three, four, five miles. No problem. Like I can do things like you want to go skiing, snowboarding, whatever. I'll try it. I can do it. I, I literally have a body of a 19 year old and my friend uh, was able to um, not succumb to that cancer. He was able to see his son graduate high school. He went to father son weekend at um, Oregon state university. And now he, you know, he went from bankruptcy and cancer diagnosis to thriving business. And, you know, we played guitar a couple weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, my friend's still alive. So, um, you know, his story is pretty amazing. And thank God he got cancer. It was the best thing to happen to both of us. I was going to say, that's definitely a good thing to look at it from a <laughs> bad situation. And the, the thing that I want to mention is you spoke about rectal bleeding and, you know, the poo and, and the stool and bowel movements. These are not common things, especially for, you know... 30 year olds to talk about it's seen as embarrassing it's seen as oh, i don't want to talk about it but you went out there and you spoke about it and you and you got so and you did something about it thanks to your friend yeah. and going to such a um such a regime structured place for some people is the best thing because like you said you saw you saw the pictures and you're like oh my gosh is that what's happening inside of me i need to change <laughs> yeah so yeah, and plus you feel so good. I even I remember a few years down the road we were we went somewhere and and Charles and he has cancer, so he shouldn't be consuming like any sugar, right? Because um, sugar feeds all disease. It's like throwing gasoline on a bonfire, and that's what I learned. Anyway, um, and he got himself like this big peanut butter cookie, and I was like, dude, what are you doing? You know, I'm like, you know, you should still be like, you know, you of anybody should, you know, I, I get it once in a while, shoot me, big deal. 
But he's like, eh, you know, he's gained a few pounds and stuff like that. But I'm like, oh, dude, I was like, look, even if you don't do, you can do doing this, I'm living this lifestyle. Like, I like getting my health back. I feel like this is a complete do over. And, um, you know, it's no big deal. He had a cookie, but you know, I just made that comment to him. It's like, I'm all in like, cause I've learned how to love myself. I'm never going back. I've learned. And I just, I, I enjoy the lifestyle. And I've had a cookie or two here and there. It's no big deal, but you know, it's not like, you know, for him, he had cancer. So I'm like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, I, I, we went through all this journey together. We even ran the Portland 2012 Portland marathon, his idea before he was technically, you know, healed of healed himself of his cancer. Like, and I remember we ran with the lymphoma leukemia society that's called team and training. It's a great organization. Um, and um, a lot of people there are running for a friend or family member with cancer. And I remember all the time here and I'm going like, what's Charles doing out here? He should be home resting. And him and I are like just smoking people. We're just like out training everybody. Right. And he's the one, he still has cancer, but, and then we'd have like buffets, right. Where they have like potlucks where everybody got together and I'm sitting there looking at all the food and I'm like thinking to myself, People, you guys don't even understand it. That everything that you brought here, not that you're bad people because I was eating it too, but everything you brought here is a contributing factor to the reason why your friends have cancer and why you are you have a high probability you're going to get it. Yes, and why those you events. Have poor health and, and I why couldn't you agree. Keep, yeah, and why you can't keep up with Charles and me now. I and couldn't agree been, more with you. We've been running marathons and doing all kinds of stuff for years. We just started doing this and we're getting these great times. We feel amazing like because it's the fuel. We changed our environment. And um, man, it made a it made a huge huge difference. Um, yeah, for, I couldn't agree more health. with you with those events and things like that that are like raising funds. And then you're saying the food there is things that are causing us. So that's absolutely true. So look, your story is absolutely amazing, and I hope that it inspires so many individuals. But I wanted to talk about also what does optimal health look like for you now? I mean, you've spoken a little bit about it that you're doing the lifestyle now. What does it look like for you now? What does success look like for you now? Well, you know, I, th I think for me, it's real simple. I just want to wake up and I want to feel good. That's it. It's real simple. I don't want to be complicated. I freaking want to wake up. I want to feel rested. I want to feel energy. I want to feel mental clarity. I want to feel calm. I don't want to feel stressed out about anything. And so this journey back to health for me has also opened up my spiritual practice, which I had like, you know, none Right. And thank God my parents didn't indoctrinate me into some religious deal when I was a kid. They just I said, what are we? And she's like, we're Christians. And I'm like, do we go to church? Well, no, you can just do that from home. I'm like, OK. And that was pretty much it. There was like there. I never saw a Bible in the house. I never you know, it's just, you know. So anyway, um, my dad was very simple. He's like, wake, wake up. And it was like, do good and don't harm people. You know, it was like he had real simple stuff. So we grew up out way out in the country, but um, you know, and I, and I, and, and, you know, no offense to any religious organizations, but you know, I went to a whole ton of them when I was in high school trying to figure this all out. And it was all like cults that were all like trying to get me in. So for me, my spiritual practice is between myself and my relationship with God, which I believe that we're all connected. And um you know, every creature, uh, you, me, um, the birds, the, the trees, everything, it's all connected. And that's why we have to, um, you know, be kind to other people and be kind to the planet and stuff like that. So if you, if you really love self and you really start taking care of yourself, that's the best way to lead others, especially uh, children, right? You know, if, you, if you're a mom out there and you're working like crazy in your business and you um, are neglecting your health, your children are watching you, right? And then typically what will happen is then, you know, then you're trying to play superwoman, do all these other things, and then a wheel falls off, right? Oh, all of a sudden you've got cancer or you get a heart attack or you just, you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe you got thyroid issues and Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, whatever, right? Fibromyalgia, maybe you're in so much pain you can't work out anymore and you've wanted to work out, you've been a workout queen for years and now you can't even work out because it's too painful, whatever, right? Arthritis kicks in. I saw a young gal in her 20s, beautiful woman, and she's like, takes her hours to get out of bed because of arthritis. I'm like, what? I didn't even understand these things are happening. People are breaking down. So as, um, as a woman goes, um, I see so many times because in our coaching program, they put themselves last. And I'm here to tell you, you have to put yourself first. If you really, really want to have a kick-ass business, if you really want your children to kick ass in life, then mama bear needs to teach baby bear how to do it. 
Baby Bear shouldn't be learning from the TV or watching. You know, Mama Bear doesn't go over and eat Ho-Hos and, and JoJo's and donuts in nature. It, or, you know, it, does, it just doesn't happen. She's, she, she shows the baby bear where the grubs are in the rotten log. And she says, eat grass over here and eat the berries and eat the salmon in the fall. And then baby bear copies her. And then baby hair bear has the same health as mama bear, right? That's how it works. So we literally have to put ourselves first. And people ask me like, who's more important, you or your kids? 11 years ago, I'd have said my kids, you know, knee jerk reaction. Now I'll tell you, it's me. I'm number one. Why? Because it's not that I won't take a bullet for my children. It's because I love them so much. And I know, no question, that the best thing that I can do for them is set the example and allow them to follow or not. Whether they follow is not up to me, but I have to set the example. And guess what? Since I've done that shift physically, emotionally, spiritually, they've come around quite, they've come to me, gravitated towards me, and they've started making changes in their life. And they're, um, one of them is very fit. And another one is doing uh, much better at ages 21 and, and 18. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's amazing. And we're, like you said, you have to be the leader and other people will follow. Don't wait until people are following you to be the leader. Be the leader, number one, and look after mm -hmm. yourself. And then people will see the change and they'll be drawn to you. And it's such a huge shift. And you're like, wow, what's happening? Why are all these people following? <laughs> I must be doing good. So that's amazing. And I love that you've mentioned all those things that, you know, you've you've changed in your life and, and, and waking up in the morning and feeling amazing. I mean, who doesn't want to feel that? A lot of us take it for granted. There's people waking up left, right, and center all around the world, but they're not refreshed. They're laying in bed for eight yeah. hours, but they're not waking up and being like, wow, that was actually energizing. They're waking up and being like, what did I do for eight hours? I just laid there. <laughs> it wasn't energizing. And that's or they don't even think about it. They just get up. They stimulate themselves with coffee, five-hour energy drinks, sugary donuts, blah, blah, blah. They just get through the day and they come home and then it's more stimulation and they can barely, you know, uh, have energy to play with their kids. Yeah, you know, and then running on fake out, energy. And they eat a bunch of food and they pass out and then they do it all over again, rinse and repeat. Yeah, it's a I recipe for disaster. The car is, it has a, here's the deal. You have what are called check body lights. Okay. If you're overweight, that's a check body light. If you're tired, you're not waking up and feeling good, check body light. Um, you have arthritis, check body light. You have headaches, check body light, right? You're not, if you don't have physical strength, that's a check body light. If you're on pharmaceutical drugs, check body light. Um, mental fog, check body light. These are lights that are flashing. Your body is telling you, you need to stop. You need to change your environment now. Otherwise, guess what? It's like driving a car. Check engine light comes on the car. You got this 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollar car you're driving. You put more and you get it maintenance all the time and everything. And you know, if that check engine light comes on and you don't get it into the shop quickly, the repair bill could go way up or that car will leave you stranded on the side of the road. It's going to break down. And then what are you going to do? You're going to have to call AAA. Here's some, oh, what's going to happen with your body? Your body breaks down. You're going to have to call our broken medical system. And then it's going to, and it's going to get worse for you because, you know, here in the States, we spend 3.3 trillion on healthcare, yet we're ranked like 38th or 42nd in the nation in the world. Why would you want to put your money and in, in your, in your, your health into that, that, that their hands? Okay it's, it's, it's not sustainable. It's not working. Look around. People are not healthy. The system's broken. We have to get back to nature. It's really simple. We have to get back to the ecosystem and nature because our, our immune system is from this ecosystem, right? So when you have these check body lights going off, pay attention to them. Like you need to pause for a moment and reflect and say, okay, wait a minute, what's going on here. I need to do something. Otherwise I'm a wheel's going to fall off and or the repair bill is going to be very expensive and and if you have a heart attack like 25 percent of cases of heart attacks there is no do-over you're dead you know so you can't go change your diet eat plant-based or do a whole food diet or do detoxing you know you can't do any of this stuff you can't start researching you know you it's too late so my thing is like why wait why wait just look around if, if you don't have if you don't feel like out of one out of ten you're a 10 in health right now then okay let's let's start moving up the ladder right? Why, why wait? If you're a two, let's go to a three and let's start taking some baby steps and gain some momentum for you. And this stuff is not hard. It's just, there's so much crap out there in the world on the internet. It's confusing to a lot of people, but innately we know instinctively, we know what to do. We've just lost our way because of social constructs, 
uh, media and very smart advertisements that sell us crap um, that never really get to the root of the issue. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love that. So look, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, toxic food, the standard American diet. And, you know, it's the same here you can use the same acronym because it's a standard Australian diet, you right. know, sad. It's pretty sad diet. It is indeed. So let's talk about today's topic, toxic f- food versus food as medicine. I mean, individuals just have their food, they put it in their mouth and that's it. They don't think about it as medicine. Most people don't think about it as medicine. Most people don't even think about it as toxic. Most people don't even think about it. Right. So let's start off and go into what is toxic food? What is it and where do we find it? Because most of us think we're not intaking this toxic food. Well, um, toxic food would be something you put in your body that lowers your immune system, right? So is the food you're putting in your body boosting your immune system and giving you energy or lowering your immune system? So that makes it pretty simple. Um, When you're looking at foods that are processed, um, you know, things that are in boxes and cans and jars and, 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 and wrappers and all this kind of stuff, highly processed foods. You know, let me just give you an example. Okay. Cereal. I don't know. Is cereal a big thing in Australia? Yes, it is. Especially. Okay. So cereal, this is, let's just break one of these down. Just to give you an example. We'll give you a few examples, right? So most of it's made out of wheat. Okay. And sometimes it'll say whole or say whole wheat, enriched wheat. It's all the same stuff. But if it says enriched, we'll get to that. But if you take a, a wheat seed and let's say it was grown in nature, it was done properly, which these aren't. Okay. These are mostly gen- genetically modified. Anytime you modify genetically a plant, it's going to disturb its metabolism and it's going to start creating formaldehyde. Now, over here in the States, our morticians are basically telling us that the older people are pretty much already embalmed by the time they get to the mort- mort- mortician. They don't really need to embalm them that much. So, because they've already been eating formaldehyde their whole life with genetically modified foods, most likely. That's my, what I've come up with. And, you know, plate, fake plastic, you know, like, like butters and stuff like that. We literally have butters that are one molecule away from plastic. You know, I, you put them out in the yard and flies won't even land on them. There's no, nothing will ever touch it. Right. So we're eating all these fake foods, right? Highly processed foods. So let's take this wheat seed. Now, if you were to take a wheat handful of hard, hard red winter wheat or spring wheat and put it in your mouth and chew it, what's going to happen? Well, you might crack a tooth. You'll, sw- if you can swallow it, And then when you poop it out, guess what? It's going to look exactly like it did when it went in. You're going to get very little to nothing out of it. It's in its dormant state. That seed has its natural insecticide or protectant, protecting its inherent poison. So the last bug doesn't eat it. And it's got inhibitors and stuff. So simply, if the, the, the company would take that seed, soak it in water, it would release the natural insecticide or protect. It would become on average eight times more digestible. And boy, do we have digestion issues today. And the nutritional factors will go up 100 to 800%. This is the power of sprouting, which means you just soak a nut seed grain or bean in water first. Once it's soaked once, it's now technically sprouted. Nutrition goes through the roof. But they don't do that. They grow this genetically modified wheat in soils that have been depleted to the tune of 85%. So it's nutrient deficient. It's in its dormant state in a hard form that you would eat and poop it out and nothing would happen. And they grind it in that state into a powder. And then they add sugar that was sprayed with tons of chemicals, yeast and water. And then they cook it at high temperatures and they feed it to us in cereals and breads and pastries and this type of stuff. And we think we're going to get nutrition. Oh, and before it goes out, they, they cook it and dry it. And then it's on these conveyor belts. And then these things spray it. Pshh. The, they're, this is, they're enriching it with vitamins, they call it. These aren't vitamins. These are synthetics. Vitamins come from nature. Synthetic vitamins come from a lab. Okay, they're acid-based. Your body's carbon-based. It's never going to work. So the food was grown in deficient soils. It was sprayed with chemicals. Was, chemicals were added and sugars and yeast cooked at high temperatures that denatured the food. Stick your hand in, a, in an oven for a while. See how long it lasts. Okay, your, your body's a natural carbon-based living organism. You take a plant like that or a piece of meat and you cook it, you, you're coagulating it, you're, you're denaturing it, you're killing it, right? And then they spray it with all these synthetic so-called vitamins, if you even want to call them that. And then they feed it to our children. There's dyes in there and super sugars and high fructose corn syrup and all this other crap, okay? This is what I would consider a toxic food, okay? I went into some depth here on cereals, but it really pisses me off with cereals because they're feeding it to our children. And we're wondering why the kids are having attention deficit disorder and having gut issues and the child is colicky and the the child um, has trouble sleeping at night. 
right? It's because the gut's all jacked up from all this fake crap food. That's what it is, right? So a better choice would be, you know, just stay away from wheat completely because it's been so messed around today unless you can find a really good heirloom source because wheat originally was pretty awesome. Staff alive, 36% protein, blah, blah, blah. But it needs to be sprouted. So look for sprouted stuff. Um, let's see, what else would be toxic? Well, how about meat? Well, um, here in the United States, they, sp they, put, they inject uh, meat with nitrates and nitrites. These are to keep them looking red. Without that, if you went into a, a, a meat place to get some meat, about 40% of the meat in a grocery store would be gray in color. Would you eat a gray steak? No, you'd probably throw up when you saw it. You'd be, uh, uh, people would be gagging in the store, but they squirt these nitrates and nitrates on them. These are not good for your health. Plus, where did the, where did the cow come from? Where, did they spray, what, what kind of food were they feeding it? Did they feed it genetically modified corn and soy, which they do a lot over here in the United States? which creates acidosis in, in the, in the cow. And then they got to give it antibiotics and hormones and they do that to fatten them up and grow them really quick. So you're now you're getting more synthetics and chemicals. In fact, today it's so bad that people now will get sick. They'll go into a hospital and they'll maybe pick up an infection or they'll get infection. They'll go into a bacterial infection and they go into the hospital and they give them antibiotics and it won't work. And these people are dying because they've built up a resistance to the antibiotics because 70% of the antibiotics that the pharmaceutical companies are making go to the livestock that we're eating. So you've been eating antibiotics your entire life, the steaks, the chickens, the turkeys, your turkey dinner for, you know, for Thanksgiving. You guys have Thanksgiving down there? No, no, we don't. Yeah. Up here, you know, the, the turkeys are actually so big. I always make a joke of it every th Thanksgiving they can't even have sex anymore. They've been hybridized so much. They're so massive. They have these huge breasts. They can't even have sex. So they have to artificially inseminate these. You want to have, you want to eat an animal that can't even have sex. I mean, that's where we're at today. These, we are creating Frankenstein foods. These are the things that I'm talking about that are quote unquote toxic foods. Now let's just, let's simplify the healthy foods. These are things that are grown in nature, um, wild crafted, um, in nutrient dense soils, even better permaculture where they don't disturb the bacteria in the soil, which is where most of the nutrients get uptaken into the root system is through these bacteria. Um, and, you know, we just got to eat fresh food. I mean, that's really what it boils down to go to your local farmer, find out, do they use good pro planting practices? How do they mineralize their soil and keep the soil nice? Um, growing home, growing herbs and sprouts in your home, 365 days a year, you know, um, stuff like this. This is how we start getting fresh food, you know, and you might say to yourself, well, I'm really busy. I got to run. I got, I'm running this company or I'm starting a company or I, I work for this company. My, I'm hectic. I'm a salesperson. You know, I'm on salary. I got to produce. Well, guess what? If you don't take care of this stuff, a wheel's going to fall off someday. You won't be able to do anything. But I can tell you, if you just take a little bit of time, it doesn't take much, but consistently a little bit of time and learn to change your environment and learn a new recipe and learn a new, you know, start sprouting. Maybe you start off with just lentils. They're easy. You can have the lentils ready to eat in two and a half days on your countertop. It doesn't take any soil or anything. I have a whole episode on sprouting on my podcast called The Health Hero Show. And you can watch it. It's an hour and a half of tricks and tips to learn how to sprout and put the most nutritious food in the planet in your house 365 days a year for you and your family you start doing these types of uh, activities and getting your lifestyle wrapped around this and all of a sudden it becomes easy it's like riding a bicycle your health's going to improve and i promise you your business is going to improve too and you're going to make a lot more money because you are the driving force of your business you are the vehicle and if you have more energy you're going to have more energy to make more calls um, and, and people are going to gravitate towards you because your cellular vibrational frequency is going to be higher. So if it comes down to you and two other people, they're going to pick you. There's just something about her. There's something about him. I don't know what it is, but he's, man, he's got a lot of energy or she's just some, I just resonated with her better. She seems to got her stuff together. I can't tell you, and we've measured this. We were talking about it earlier. I, we coach people on their health, but I actually went back through the people that own businesses and they're on commission sales. We noticed in our six month health coaching program that those people's incomes increased an average of 21% in six months getting their health right. So you wanna make more money, pour your money into yourself. Anytime, I mean, I'm telling you statistically, anytime you put anything into yourself, self-education, working on your health, working on your spiritual practice, working on your relationships, working on your body, you will get a six X to a 10 X return back. 
every single time that you put good things out, it will come back to you. That's how the universe works. It's called, um, uh, it's actually physics. What you put out is what you get back. It's a, it's a universal law. Yeah. Wow. And, and it's so interesting what we put into ourselves, including the food, including spiritual practice, including who we surround ourselves with, all of these things, we work ourselves. And when we go back to what you said, if we put ourselves first, oh my gosh, things change. The vibration changes. Like you said, people choose you as a business owner over someone else. You know, your family gets drawn to you closer. Good people get drawn and things like that. And you, and you just, it becomes normal to choose these non-toxic foods because it's just a lifestyle. It's not a diet. It's not a quick fix. It's something that you continue doing. Like what you said with your friend who was eating the cookie. It's like, no, no, no. This is a lifestyle that I'm living now. And this is the lifestyle that I've decided to choose because I've seen the outcome. I've seen my business excel. I've seen my health. I've seen my family. So I, I love that part that you mentioned. And, and, you know, you mentioned only cereal, right? That's just one little thing that most people consume in the morning or so forth. And you just draw out so many things that could be toxic in it. It wasn't just that one thing that you focused on. It was like 10 different things that you drew out of the toxins. So imagine if you look at all the food you're eating throughout the day and draw out how toxic things can be or how healthy they can be. It's just mind blowing. It can be inundating too. So I just kept going down these rabbit holes and rabbit holes and it's freaking yeah. exhausting. Like calling companies up and getting, it's like calling, like I was on the phone with the department of motor vehicles. It's like government organization. They hang up on you. You got to call back. They hang up on you again. They just, you keep getting disconnected. They here, talk to this department, talk to that department. That's exactly like it is with these big corporations just trying to find out what the hell's in the product they're selling you. They don't even know. Most of the people working at the companies have no idea what the hell is in what they're selling. They just work there. I don't know. I just work here. You know, it, it blows, blows my mind. So you start learning like keywords. Like if you see natural flavors, by law in the United States, natural flavors means that up to 90% can be pure chemical. And in most cases, it usually is because the synthetics are cheaper than to go out and gather something with human hands. That's the bottom line. Um, xanthan gum. This is the, why I started my supplement line. Xanthan gum. Look it up. It is mutated corn syrup fermented in bacteria used as an emulsifier so that when you make a shake and you shake it up once, it doesn't settle. You don't have to shake it twice because we're lazy. But guess what? I am not putting that crap in my body. And I had to call all my clients up. It was a protein powder back in the day that I recommended. We don't recommend protein powders anymore. And the reason why is because we have kidney dialysis clinics popping up in the United States like crazy over here. Overconsumption of protein, both animal and some of these plant proteins. And we saw an also an independent study on a lot of these high quality plant proteins. Um, these companies have a lot of heavy metals and, and stuff in them that, you know, I don't want to do it. So for me, I know that I don't need a whole lot of protein to build muscle. It's the high quality fats mixed with good sleep and weight resistance exercise. That's what builds muscle. But anyway, so I'm reading these things and, and I had to call up all my coaching students and say, Hey, look, return it. They put Xanthan gum in here and I explained it to them. And everybody's like, Oh my God, that's terrible. Right? So after this kept happening time and time again, finally, I'm like, damn it, that's it. I'm going to start my own supplement company just for the core products that we use in our coaching program so that I know what the hell's in it. Cause then I can just I don't have to like research all the time because I was always also doing this stuff for me. So I literally built our products for me selfishly and for my small group of coaching students. So we just ordered little batches and, you know, I was just a little speck on the wall. I still am. I'm, we're a very small, uh, you know, family owned business, but we, you know, we're shipping worldwide now. We have thousands of clients and it's growing. It's because people, we're literally a needle in a haystack, like literally. And um, the supplement industry is really crazy. 92% um, of the supplements on the market are pure synthetics. 85% total are owned by pharmaceutical companies. They're going to get a synthetic in you one way or the other. So what you're left with is the 8% that are whole food or food-based. But there's something called other ingredients. Now, I don't know if this is going to show up or not, but oh, there it did. You see where it says on our bottle, this is our green 85. It says no magnesium stearate no silicon dioxide, no dicalcium phosphate. So why would I put that in big red bold letters bigger than the actual ingredients on right below my ingredients tab? Because ingredient, other ingredients are still ingredients, okay? You're still eating them. Silicon dioxide, as an example, is a level three toxin on the EPA's toxin list. Now, did you hear what I just said? 
It's a level three toxin, yet it's in most supplements. These are things called binders, fillers, and flow agents. Binders help to keep capsules to, or tablets together. Um, fillers help to fill up capsules because synthetics don't take up a whole lot of room. So Australians and Americans are not going to buy an empty capsule. So they fill it up with a bunch of toxic crap or flow agents. These are where they run the material, the raw materials through these encapsulation machines. And so the raw materials don't cake up and stick. So it's good for production and speed of, you know, them making money, but it's not good for your health. Right. So they put these synthetic, this crap in there. So it runs through the, the it's a flow agent. So it flows better and the, it's speed of production. So these things um, to me are a moral problem. Um, but, you know, it's, it's in most supplements today. So the way I look at it is like, let's say you have um, the world's best brownie recipe. Okay. Your daughter comes home. She's 16. She's got a little friend there with her. And she's like, mom, mom, guess what? Oh my God, there's this new movie out and it's amazing. And all the kids have seen it and it's, uh, we have to go see it. It's, it's just great. And the first thing you say is like, what's it rated? Well, I knew you're going to ask. I know you won't let me go, but it's rated R. And I know you have to be 18. I'm only 16. I'm mom, but guess what? I know the whole movie already. There's only one cuss word. And we hear more than that every day in school. And there's like one brief scene of nudity. This guy walks by and you can barely see his butt cheek. It's just like a glimpse. Otherwise it would be PG 13. That's it. And you're, and you're sitting there going, you know what? Okay. You can go, but under one condition and the girls are getting all excited. Yeah. What, what, what's the, you have to eat one of my brownies before you go. And so they start looking at each other like, really? Okay. And they grab the bounty and they're about to tear into that brownie. You say, but wait a minute, before you go, I just want to let you know something. This recipe is my same award-winning brownie recipe, but it's just a little bit different. Now it's the exact same recipe. Everything else is the same, but there's one new ingredient. I, I, I didn't put much in there. It's just a little teeny bit. You won't even notice it. You can't see it. You can't smell it. You can't taste it. But I put in, mom, what is it? I put a little cat poop in the brownie recipe. Oh my God, this is disgusting. And the girls throw the brownies down and they're like, they're, they're about ready to throw up. Oh my God, why would you do that? And she said, well, see, this is the exact reason why you're not going to go watch that movie. Because even though it's a wonderful movie and it's got all these great people and it's got this great story, that cuss word and that brief scene of nudity had tainted the movie. And that's why a, and it's not good for a 16 year old eyes. And that's why you're not going to go. And it's the same thing with the foods that we eat, right? And in supplements that we drink or that we eat and then and we take and then the drinks that we're drinking. So we have to read labels. If we have to become stewards of what goes in our mouth, there is nothing more sacred than that. And what goes into our children's mouth, because it does affect us. It does affect us. And you're not going to get help from the medical community. Most of them, because it's not their fault. They're not trained medical. You, I talk to doctors all the time. They're like how much training you got? They start laughing in, in nutrition in two weeks. Like I don't know. That's for dietitians and nutritionists. You know, and 70, 80% of them are overweight, or obese, or morbidly obese, and we're supposed to take advice from them. Never take advice from somebody if you're in the health space that doesn't have good health. Never take advice from somebody about how to make a lot of money if they don't have a lot of money themselves. Try to find people, mentors, people that you can look up to that are like truly, like in this space, all the people that I follow, that I get information from, they're super freaking healthy. People that are doing pull-ups in their 80s, people that are um, meditating for two hours, three hours a day in their 70s, and their skin looks like they're 35. Um, I know a 60-year-old woman who's gorgeous, unbelievable. You could She looks like she's 35. Magic, well, you know what her magic secret is? She's done yoga for over 20 years, and she's been eating raw foods for over 25 years. Ah, magic formula, fresh foods, and she moves her body. Wow. Right. So clues are everywhere. Clues are totally everywhere on this. And um, I mean, I can, you don't even get me started. I can just keep going on. And on. <laughs> no, I love it. You provided so much information. And I love that you explained what toxins foods are, but then you also explained what non-toxic and food as medicine is. And I mean, and you also explained what would happen to us if we start eating food as medicine. Like you said, you're 85, you're doing pull-ups, you know, you're, you're, you're looking amazing. You're feeling amazing. There's so many, it's like, it's, it's, it's showing us the evidence is there, you know, it's, yes. it's showing us. And, and you said there's signs all around us and follow those individuals that you look up to, um, not those individuals that are intaking those toxins foods because it's going to catch up to them 
100%. Yeah, you know what? Really, I'll share this with you. I, I learned it. Here's a couple crazy things that a lot of people don't know. The largest organ in the body is, and most people think it's the skin. It's not. It's the fascia. It's our fascia. Um, something else that I learned today that was really cool was like when 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 we're born, um, our brain and our gut are actually one cell, and then they split. Think about that. The brain and the gut. But they always stay connected through this thing called the vagus nerve. So you've heard of the gut-brain connection, but it actually starts in our as an embryonic cell. The gut and the brain are together. They split. And look at a brain and a gut. They look, they look kind of the same, right? They're just a little different, but they're always connected. So it's so important. Like If you want to have mental clarity and have good, clear mind and not get Alzheimer's and dementia, focus on that gut. Really focus on that gut. It's the I guarantee it's the epicenter to health, and um, and we just try to make it easy for people to get the gut cleaned up and you know clean up all the toxic chemicals in the blood, the fat, the muscle tissue, and flood the body with nutrition. Flood the body with these bacteria that are soil based, and you know your immune system will come back so fast it'll make your head spin. You can't even believe how good you can feel. A hundred percent. So, what would you say would be some quick little practical tips for the audience to incorporate to eat food as medicine? Well, um, I would say as far as eating goes, um, one of our core four secrets we teach is chewing your food really, really, really well. That would be the first thing I'd recommend. Less than uh, 4% of the population is doing it, and it's the first domino in digestion. And most of the enzymes are actually made in your mouth. You have six ducts in your mouth that secrete enzymes, amylase, and lipase. And that's where you preload your food with it, and then it goes into your stomach. And then those enzymes in the stomach then break down most of your food, the starches and the fats. So chewing your food is monumental. It also stimulates meridian points in your teeth that upregulates your serotonin by up to 500%. So for those of you dealing with depression, you can't take a serotonin uh, a medication or supplement that's going to give you what chewing your food is going to give you. It's amazing. Um, as far as food as medicine goes, um, two that I like to get people on because so many people have gut issues is flax water, making your own flax water, and also um, uh, chia seed pudding and chia seed water, putting chia seeds. These things are unbelievable for gastrointestinal health. Unbelievable. And then sprouts. I would totally get into sprouting. If I was just going to give people, you know, a couple little easy things, flaxseed water, get chia seeds and chia seed water, chia seed pudding. And then also, um, uh, um, what was the last one I said? Sprouting. <laughs> yeah, sprouts. <laughs> of course. Sprouts. Yeah, right yeah. get into sprouts. Sprouted nuts, sprouted seeds, sprouted grains, sprouted beans, sprout everything. Sunflower sprouts, broccoli sprouts, red clover sprouts, uh, alfalfa sprouts, onion sprouts. Just get some sprouts and start eating them. And don't be scared of them. Like people, it's funny when people sprout, they take a little teeny <laughs> bit of sprout. And I'm like, they don't even weigh anything. Just get in there and eat a whole bunch of it. You know? I love it. I love it. Put in your food. That's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for sharing so much information, sharing your story, which was so inspiring and valuable, and then sharing so much information on your journey to create your own supplements. And then also educating so many individuals on their health because you've seen it and you felt it. So mm -hmm. now you just want to share that information with everyone which is absolutely amazing and we're so blessed to have you around in this world and individuals like you who are just motivated who are just um, energetic and who just want to get this message across and have that voice to get that message across so i really really do appreciate you being on the natural health podcast to finish off i know probably maybe one of your health hacks may be sprouting but what would you say is your natural health hack that keeps you going the way you're going what would be one of them that you may do every day or once a week? Well, I think, I mean, we could talk about sprouts until the sun, you know, I could do it forever. Um, but, you know, we talked about waking up and feel good, right? Well, when does that really start? And that really starts in your bedtime. So getting a routine is going to be everything. It's everything. Now, I already know there's people here that I, I got a business and I got kids and I got to have some time with the hubby. And it's, sometimes they got to stay up late, you know, just to have some. The, the reality is, is that if you can shift your clock, if you're going to bed at midnight and you can start going, we just have our clients start at 1130. Then we bump it back 30 minutes. 
we keep bumping it back until we get them around going to bed around 10. And I have people like, I'm a night owl. There's no way I could do it. That's why I don't say no, we're not going to go from one in the morning to, to 10 because it's, they can't even believe it. And we're going to, we're going to make 1230 the goal. And we stick with that until it's a habit. And then we bump it to midnight and we slowly take baby steps, getting that more, getting your, your day starts when you go to bed and it starts with your, your nightly routine. You know, not eating foods too late, not drinking liquids too late. So you're up in the middle of the night peeing, um, not staring at blue lights, you know, at least an hour before, preferably two hours before you go to bed. And if you do, get yourself some of uh, these, these glasses that will block the blue light. Get screen things that will block the blue light. I have these if I have to work, work late, right? Be smart about it. Crack your window at night so you have fresh air. Um, you know, make sure the room is very dark. If not, get some iPads. We also rerun essential oils at night and we rotate them at least every four nights. There's different essential oils coming into my lungs while I sleep, right? So very quiet room. So getting your sleep environment dialed is critically important because it's something you're going to do every day. You're going to sleep, right? So getting the basic foundational things like sleep and water and stuff like that, you know, um, these things are very, very important, um, creating a really good environment. So I guess that's what I would say is like um, really work on um, uh, uh, making sure that you have a, a good uh, bedtime and a really good sleeping environment would be very, very, very beneficial for people out there that are maybe struggling with weight, weight gain and energy issues. A hundred percent. Health issues in general. Sleep is underestimated. And earlier you said you know how much protein you need. And one of the things is to build muscles. You mentioned one of the things is sleep. And we underestimate the sleep stages and hitting all of them, how much to actually recover oh, it's and build our body. Yeah. I've done a ton of research. I actually have a $5,500 bed on its way. It'll be here on the 21st. I'm really excited to up my game a little bit more. Um, I could leave you guys with a couple hacks. Like if people want to get their water right, I used to have, I mean, you should maybe have me back on. We could talk about this stuff. But like when I went to, I've been big into purified water for years. Our core first secret is drink half your body weight in liquid ounces daily, right? So if you're 200 pounds, that's 100 ounces, 100 pounds, 50 ounces, um, purified water. But when I got my water restructured and I learned about, if you're on city pipes, these high pressure pipes make the water molecules too big. And you just drink it and you pee it out and you drink it and you pee it out. It's not getting through the intestinal line that well. Well, when I got hooked up with this gal, Danusha, and she got me on this water restructuring deal, I could drink water and it just disappears. I could drink a lot of it. And then two hours later, then I pee a lot. So that told me it went through my system. But I've been high on water since 2018, like high. Like I have unbridled energy. What I learned from that restructured water is because it absorbs well, it gets into my bloodstream, it gets into my lymphatic system, and I get 80% more absorption of the nutrients from the food I eat and the supplements I take when I'm on this water, right? So if people want to get their water right, they can book a free appointment with Danusha. It's at uh, mypurifiedwater.com. And um, because I don't have time to get into it um, here, she's the water expert and she walks you through all that stuff, whether you're on a well, whether you're on the city water and all that, all that stuff you need. It's really important. You got to get your sleep right. You got to get your water right. We got a detox. Um, we should just do like a marathon. We should just line all this stuff up and just talk for like <laughs> 10 hours. We could, I could throw up all this information and make it, write it down and go take action. Cause that's what we need to do. I know we should just have a 12 hour podcast <laughs> happening with our blue light, black glasses on red light, everything. <laughs> Yeah, just go that. through the whole day. Good morning. Hey, just go through the routine. That's when I've been brushing my teeth with this yeah. non-toxic toothpaste <laughs> yeah. that I made from essential oils and coconut and bacon soda. Yeah. All right. I'm wiping my butt with uh, bamboo toilet paper, you know, but even better, get a bidet. You know, it's yeah. like oh. there's all these things that we can teach people that I've learned. So many things, so many things. But I really do appreciate it. And we'll hopefully get you back on and you can share more of those little things, maybe about, you know, your everyday life, little toxic things. Like you said, toilet paper. Who would have thought that? But a hundred percent air water and so many things uh, so but thank you so much for sharing all of this valuable information on natural Health podcast today really really appreciate your time tim yeah thanks for having me on and if, if anybody here is interested in trying out our whole food um, herbal products that are formulated by our we have a doctor dr scott treadway he's on staff our formulator um and He's got, he's in his seventies and his skin literally looks like he's 35. He was the one of the guys I was telling you about, like, it's amazing. Uh, he's just a cool dude. Anyway, 
But um, we have a lot of products. So just go to chemicalfreebody.com. That's chemicalfreebody.com. Go to the products tab and scroll down to what says savings bundles. That way you can get a discount, okay? You can start off with a little jumpstart bundle, get your gut cleaned up, you know, get your energy back or do what I do, which is the total energy and detox bundle. That's what I do on a monthly basis. And I take our new turmeric product because it's like, a breakthrough in turmeric, it, it, it's literally over 185 times more anti-inflammatory than any oral pill you'll take. But Or just pick a bundle in between, doesn't matter. And then when you go to checkout, put in the code natural health, and you'll get an additional 5% off your first order. So that way you get a double discount. And then we have a double your money back guarantee on all of our products because I already know they're going to work because they're from nature. Now, here's the reality though. There's a very small percentage of people that some things don't work out for. Okay. We're, we're prepared for that. It's no big deal. Call us, email us and say, Hey, this worked and that worked, but this other product over here didn't work for me. What do I do? We'll refund your money. It's not a problem or I'll steer you to another company, but I've learned how to read labels. I, I um, I'm actually excited because I found another supplement company today. that looks pretty darn good. So usually they might have 10, 15, 20 products, but there's only two or three that we would recommend based on what I've learned from Dr. Treadway and my, my experience over the last you know 11 years in this journey. And then we'll point you to that or we'll, we'll find something for you because these are just tools. The supplements are just part of the tools in the toolkit. There's many other things like, you know, chewing your food until liquefied, avoiding liquids with meals, doing your breath work, drinking lots of purified water, getting your sleep right, grounding, getting outside, sunshine. You know, there's there's so many things to, to learn uh, that you may or may not be doing, that, but they're just tools. So anyway, that's um, if, if people are interested and they want to try our product line out, um, we, we do ship, we ship worldwide. So um, there is a little bit of a delay with the, the whole COVID fiasco, but um, it will get there. And um, we have people like in Australia, New Zealand, we have customers there. We've got customers all over the world in Europe and, and a lot of them will actually get buying consortiums together. They like, they get the whole family and and some of them order like three, four, five, six thousand dollars for the products every quarter. Then they distribute them out just to save on shipping and stuff. So we do work with some people on that too. So it's really Amazing. cool. I, I am just humbled. Um, and thank you for having me on. Uh, thank you listeners for uh, listening to me. I hope that you just take one thing today and implement it in your life and you get some results. And if you do, we'd love to hear about it. Thank you so much. And I'll put all those notes in the show notes below with your podcast, with your website and where people will be able to access that, those products that you spoke about or anything along. That those would be lines. awesome. I really appreciate you doing that. That's cool. A hundred percent. I'll put that in the show notes so people can get in touch if they love your energy like I do to be able to jump on a podcast and listen to you <laughs> over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Um, thank you for joining us, Natural Art Podcast. And remember, the missing link between failure and success is your health. Content and information provided here is opinion of Mahela Raguz and is for information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. It is not intended to provide medical advice or take the place of medical advice or any current treatment you're undertaking. Consult your own medical professionals for any medical issues that you may be having. This entire disclaimer also applies to any guests or contributors to the Natural Health Podcast. It is advised that you consult your doctor or healthcare professional in relation to any health concerns you may be having. Mahela Raguz does not take responsibility for any health consequences which occur from a person listening, viewing, or reading this content. And in a circumstances, Circumstances Sheldon Natural Podcast, Mahela Raguz, any guests or contributors to the Natural Podcast, or any employees, associates, or affiliates of Mahela Raguz be responsible for damages arising from the information provided on the Natural Podcast. By listening to this podcast, you agree not to use this podcast as medical advice to treat any medical conditions in either yourself or others. Please note if you're taking prescription, do not stop your medication or start a new protocol, including but not limited to supplements diet, lifestyle changes without consulting a doctor or healthcare professional. If you or any person has a medical concern, you should consult with your healthcare provider or seek other professional medical advice. Never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have read or heard on the Natural Podcast or in any linked materials. If you think you may have a medical emergency, call your doctor or emergency services immediately. Neither Mahela Raguz nor the publisher of this context takes responsibility for the possible health consequences of any person or persons reading or listening or following the information in the educational content.